Kayla W says, odd question, but does anywhere smell like cow, farm, or anything? I'm looking to move out there, but I really want to avoid that if possible. Smiley face. People are moving to San Antonio in waves right now, and in today's video, I'm dropping answers to some of the top questions and comments that y'all have been leaving here on the channel. If you want to get a real sense of what it's like to live here and what to expect when relocating, then stay tuned because we're getting into it right now. What's going on family? This is Greg Foster here with Market Boss at eXp Realty right here in San Antonio, Texas. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, working, eating, chilling, and playing in San Antonio, Texas, then click the subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're notified every time we drop a new video. And our team and I, we're getting calls every day from folks just like you looking into the Alamo City. So if you're thinking about moving or relocating anywhere in San Antonio, then give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back when moving to San Antonio, Texas. So the first question that we've got up on the list here is Lily Andrews, and she's wanting to know how much are the HOAs? So here's a really good news about the HOAs here in San Antonio. Most of them are in the $300 to $600 a year range, which really tends to surprise a lot of people. They'd be like, hold up, Greg, that's like... 25 to $50 a month. And I'm like, I know, right? Really, it's kind of crazy when you think about all the amenities that you'll find in most of the suburban areas in San Antonio. I mean, you've got everything from large pools with splash pads and sport courts to walking trails and large green spaces and even lifestyle directors that organize community activities with food trucks, block parties, and neighborhood garage sales. Now, I can already hear a lot of y'all out there talking about how you don't want to be in an HOA with all of the rules and stuff, which First of all, let me get one thing straight. This is Texas. And as I'm sure you know, Texans really don't like being told what to do either. More than anything, the HOAs here are mainly just about keeping up the aesthetic of the neighborhood. If you ain't trying to cut your grass or if you want to paint your house pink or purple or something like that, HOA probably going to be like, uh, we, we don't do that here. Other than that, you're probably going to be cool. Unless, of course, you want like goats and chickens or something like that. That's going to be a hard no. That kid's son asked for a video on the crime rate in San Antonio. This one is actually the top question our team gets when people reach out about moving here. And a couple months ago, I put this video together right here, which talks specifically about the crime here in San Antonio. Now, as a realtor, I've got this code of ethics things that I have to follow, which kind of prohibits me from saying things like this neighborhood is good and that neighborhood is bad. However, what I can say is that when people reach out to my team about moving here, just about everyone says the exact same thing. They all want to live in a nice, safe neighborhood with good schools. And in most cases, they want to be in newer communities with homes built in the last 10 to 15 years or sometimes even as far back as like 20 years and with that criteria in mind almost everyone that we've helped relocate to san antonio has moved to one of three places we see a lot of people head out to the far west side just outside loop 1604 by SeaWorld for all of the new home communities and some of the best affordability that you're going to find in the entire city then there's the northwest side around Helotus and la Quintera area outside loop 1604 along i-10 Right in there, you've got this cool mix of a slower paced country vibe with Helotus and then this high end lifestyle in the La Quintera area with some of the best shopping, dining and luxury communities in all of San Antonio. And finally, there's the far north side outside Loop 1604, just on the other side of Highway 281. Folks tend to move out here mainly for the highly rated schools in the Northeast Independent School District and the sense of safety they feel with all of the gated communities in the area. Adriana Benson says, I heard the cedar fever hit some people so badly that they avoid going out by stocking up on supplies. So this one actually hits pretty close to home because I literally went my entire life without any kind of allergies until I moved to San Antonio back in 2014. I actually talk a lot about the allergies in my video about the pros and cons of moving here and what it really comes down to is that we've got a lot of these cedar trees in this part of Texas and personally I think they look pretty cool and they even smell pretty good too. But the pollen that comes off these things makes about half the people here miserable in certain parts of the year. I mean, you can literally see this stuff floating around in the air and it just gets on everything. Now, it's not bad for everyone. From what I can tell, it's usually about 50-50 on whether or not the cedar pollen is going to affect you. Like my 16-year-old and I, we can walk outside for like 10 minutes and end up looking like we got punched in the face. And then my wife and our 13-year-old, I mean, they're not even infected at all by it. So if you get here and end up having issues with the whole cedar fever thing, just make sure you pick up some of these drop right here from HEB and keep some of that stuff on hand because they do sell out from time to time. Expat Lifestyle wants to know, what are the areas with the most jobs? I want to move close so I can take the bus or walk. The areas with most of the major employers in San Antonio are going to be the northwest, the far west, and the far north parts of the city. And people living in these areas typically enjoy shorter commute times to work. 
northwest San Antonio is along I-10 from Loop 410 all the way out past Loop 1604. And right up in there, you've got the Texas Medical Center with a number of major area hospitals and clinics. There's the corporate campus for USAA, and then the main campus for UTSA is right off of Loop 1604, along with the corporate headquarters for Valero Energy right next door. Out on the far west side, we see a lot of the main operation complexes for large financial institutions and insurance companies like Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, Citibank, Frost Bank, and Nationwide. Then up in far north San Antonio, we have more jobs in the medical field with Methodist Hospital, Baptist Hospital, and the Children's Hospital all right there in the Stone Oak Medical Complex, along with even more jobs in the energy field with the corporate headquarters for Marathon Petroleum right off of Highway 281. Then of course there's the four military bases we have here with Lackland Air Force Base, Camp Bullis, Randolph Air Force Base, and Fort Sam Houston. Now you can check out this video right here if you're wanting a full breakdown of the highest paying jobs and major employers in the San Antonio area. We see a lot of people making a decision about where they live based on where they're going to end up working and the type of community that they feel comfortable with. This video right here gives you a whole lot to think about when it comes time to figuring out which neighborhood you want to live in. So Grandma Johnson says, thanks for the video, love the content, he likes all the new communities going up in the area. However, with new communities comes less space between neighbors. Where should I be looking if I want a bit more space, but also have the community feel? Good schools are important, of course, too. So this is a common question we get from a lot of people, too, because there's this talk about all the affordability in San Antonio and Texas in general, especially when you're comparing it to some of the higher cost areas on the East Coast and the West Coast. But that's mainly if you want to be in a subdivision. You can still get a really nice home here starting in the two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 range for something that's either brand new built, recently built, or in a master plan community. The only real issue here is that most subdivisions only have a five foot setback from the side lot line, which means you pretty much end up with another house 10 feet away from yours. And it doesn't really matter if you're like the $200,000 or the $400,000 price range. Your neighbors are basically right there. If you're looking for something with a half acre home site or bigger, you actually have to go a little further out into the outskirts of San Antonio. Some good places to look are out further west towards Medina Lake, out towards Bernie along I-10, or further north along Highway 281 out towards Bolverde and Spring Branch. These areas really are beautiful with some amazing views of the Texas Hill Country and you've got access to great school systems there too. You just have to be willing to pay for something like that because larger home sites with newer homes in these areas typically start somewhere in the mid 400 thousands and then they jump up pretty quick from there. Colin McCormick asks, what's so good about HEB? I'm moving to San Antonio in a month. Okay Colin, I hope you're watching this bro because I'm about to put you on game to what this whole HEB thing is really about. First of all, HEB is the single best grocery store chain in the universe. And it's mainly because it's a Texas thing and we all know everything is better down here in Texas. Now we got a lot of people reaching out about San Antonio who are also thinking about moving to Florida. And trust me, you really don't want to do that. I mean, I get it. Florida's got all this pretty sunshine and these amazing beaches, but Florida also has hurricanes, big snakes, and alligators. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up shopping at one of them other grocery stores thinking you're really doing something when you could have just came to Texas and had a life-changing experience every time you need to pick up some bread, milk, and eggs. And in case you think I'm just hyping things up, we tell clients all the time that it's basically a wasted trip to San Antonio if you don't visit at least one HEB in the area that you're planning on moving to. And they'd be so mind blown, they even take selfies standing outside of HEB and send them to us. Seriously though, I really wish I could find the words to truly articulate the awesomeness that is HEB. But it's kind of like trying to explain to somebody what love is. You just know it when you feel it. Kayla W says, Odd question, but does anywhere smell like cow, farm, or anything? I'm looking to move out there, but I really want to avoid that if possible. Smiley face. So Kayla, this one actually had me laugh out loud because most of y'all, y'all probably don't know this, but I grew up in Kansas, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Now, Kansas isn't all wheat fields and farm animals, okay? I actually grew up in a town with like 40,000 people, but back in high school, we'd go to football games in smaller towns like liberal Kansas, and as soon as you step off the bus, the cow smell would hit you right in the face. Fortunately, in San Antonio, it smells like trees, fajitas, margaritas, and opportunity. Rage Quit asks, how are the tornadoes or hurricanes in San Antonio? I'm going to go ahead and throw this one up here one more time. Uh, we, we don't do that here. A lot of the severe weather in Texas actually misses San Antonio for the most part. Out in West Texas, it's all dry and you've got these crazy dust storms. And then further up in Dallas is where you usually see a lot of more of the tornadoes and the large size hail. And then over in Houston is where you see more of the hurricanes and the flooding with them being so close to the Gulf. Not that we don't get hail and some strong thunderstorms in San Antonio. It's just that we're pretty fortunate in the sense that, you know, it's not near as extreme out here as it is in other parts of the state. 
Cat Williams wants to know what areas have the lowest property tax rates, but still a safe area to live. So this one is a really good one too, because I talk a lot of my videos about the property taxes here in San Antonio. If you're gonna be in the city limits, your tax rate is usually gonna be around about 2.7%, which means that depending on how much money you put down, your property taxes could be up to a third of your mortgage payment. Contrast that with the 2% you'd pay if you lived outside city limits, and it's usually a difference of like $200 to $300 a month in the payment for the exact same priced home. If you jump into Google Maps and type in San Antonio, Texas, you'll see a pretty good outline of what the city limits look like. A lot of the areas outside Loop 1604 still have a San Antonio address, but fall outside the city limits giving you the opportunity to take advantage of lower property taxes and as I mentioned earlier these areas are where a lot of our clients tend to settle down based on newer communities great schools and a sense of safety that they feel from all the gated neighborhoods out there so Darren wants to know if the traffic here is bad like in California so here's the deal if you ask locals in San Antonio about the traffic they probably gonna tell you that it's terrible but if you ask me it's nothing compared to the traffic in Austin Dallas or Houston and we also work with a lot of people moving here from out of state who say that the traffic here is nothing compared to where they came from, especially my California people. And it has a lot to do with how our highway systems are set up down here. You can literally drive from one side of town all the way to the other in the seventh largest city in the country with a couple million people in the metro area. You can literally drive 20 miles from one side of San Antonio clear to the opposite end of the metro area and get there in like 30 or 40 minutes pretty much any time of the day, even in rush hour. I tell that to my California peeps and they'd be like, Whoa. I'm not trying to be funny, but I heard in California, it takes y'all like 45 minutes just across the street. Jason Deadrock says, watching your videos really makes me and my wife excited to PCS back to and settle down for good in San Antonio. Now this one right here is probably one of my favorite comments on the channel so far. Not only do we see a lot of active duty folks PCSing in and out of San Antonio with the four military bases that we have here, but we also help a lot of retired service members who are moving here as well. Many of which who either went to basic training here or were stationed in San Antonio at some point in the past fell in love with this city and made it a goal of theirs to move back here whenever they could. And with San Antonio affectionately known as Military City USA, there's all kinds of opportunities for folks to make a home here, to take advantage of DOD and civil service job opportunities here, and either raise a family or settle down in retirement in a city that really appreciates them for their service that they've given to this country. Now, if you want any more information on what it's like to move to or live in Alamo City, our team and I, we're getting calls from folks every single day and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about moving or relocating anywhere in the San Antonio area, then give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back when moving to San Antonio, Texas.